Howdy folks, before I get to what I'm doing here today, look at the rims on this model W124. Oh, so gorgeous. I Love these rims. These are these I would trade in my uh, current uh, AMG monoblocks for. Look at this, Performer 25, beautiful. So anyway, what the hell am I doing again here with the Pajero at Procast Tinted and Accessories in SS5 Kalanajaya, getting new horns. The uh, existing horns were like, <laughs> nah. I need horns that go. Frap! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so adding a relay putting in the horns, also getting some daytime running lights. Now these old cars, uh, the lights are still using halogen bulbs, so they're not very, very clear, not very bright. So nothing that a set of daytime running lights can't uh, fix. But since I'm here, I'm also going to get carpet mats for the back. Uh, there's no mats here, as you can see. And uh, I'm going to get this covered up as well. So yeah, that's what Heng is doing over there. Right, so the journey begins. Later, I'm gonna get tint done, of course. The, the car already has central locking, which is great. I'm changing the battery in the remote to see whether it works, because currently I'm using the key to lock and unlock the doors, and all four doors lock and unlock, which is wonderful. So at least that's something. Right, so yeah, new horns going in, daytime running lights. The big three, as uh, some people have come to call it. Wonderful, very, very happy to get this car back. Yes, there was a a lot done at Kenzone and I shall share the bill with you in just a sec. So here we go folks, as you can see this is the bill for the Pajero and these are the things that were done. Oil filter, gear oil, axle oil, radiator coolant, uh, pump out the wheel bearing, brake shoe, uh, rear right, brake pump, rear right, wheel bearing, rear right, bearing cone, Mitsubishi Pajero, shaft oil seal, Mitsubishi Pajero, bearing seal, spring bush, spring bush, rear right, brake fluid, aircon dryer, Mitsubishi Pajero, aircon switch, power window switch, sorry, aircon receiver, Mitsubishi Pajero, power window, rear right, Mitsubishi Pajero, aircon compressor, Mitsubishi Pajero, 480 bucks. Wow, that was the biggest uh, single cost, I think. Yeah, the aircon was not working very well. Bonnet handle for the Mitsubishi Pajero for the rear and then we've got belts and stuff like that. So in total, the bill for the Mitsubishi Pajero, Mitsubishi Pajero was not too bad. Not too bad, not too bad. Really, I expected more. Yeah, so whatever I saved on haggling for the price, it's gone here. Which is great because then I didn't have to spend this above and beyond the price of buying the car. So yeah, haggle, don't lowball, never lowball, but haggle, haggle and uh, trying to come to an agreement, but this was all done for the Pajero. Very, very happy. So yes, my costs have, uh, are still below 15K. My target was 15, all in, including uh, fixing up whatever needed to be fixed up. And uh, so yeah, below 15, lovely. So now it's time to go off-road and break more things so I can get more of a bill like this. Bloody hell, what have I done? So here we go. You saw what it was like just now, right? Nice, much, much better. You see, just, just something like this can make such a huge difference. Huge, lovely. You save about 1,000 plus. You work out cheaper than me. 4,000. You want five, even more. You can spend for 200 plus. 400 bucks of savings. Hey, how's it going, folks? I'll tell you what, this is chalk and cheese. This is a far cry from when I picked up the Pajero in Rantau Panjang a couple of weeks ago till now I got the aircon going. Yes, the aircon was the single biggest cost of the whole build to get rectified. I needed a new condenser, I needed a new compressor, I needed uh, some new uh, pipes. So basically a new aircon system. Of course, Kenzo did a very, very good job. The aircon is brilliantly cold. I love it. So I'm driving on the road, if you can, if, the reason I'm shouting is because I've got the army truck syndrome going. I've got MT-117 mud terrain tires from Silverstone on the car still. And uh, these tires are about four years old, five years old. Um, they've still got some grip. I, I wouldn't push it in the wet, especially on asphalt. I wouldn't push it, but they've still got some grip and they're still pretty good. 
So I'm gonna use them for now because uh, <coughs> mud terrain tires are horrendously expensive. Yeah, mud terrain tires are not the cheapest in the world. Uh, I did a casual um, observation through uh, the internet and I saw like the cheapest ones are like 350, 400 ringgit a piece. A piece! Yeah. So the better ones, uh, the more expensive ones can go up close to one grand a piece. So I'm gonna wait for a while, I'm gonna use these. Where am I heading? Well, actually nowhere. I'm just heading to nowhere special. It's like just driving to see whether everything is working, everything's okay, temperature is stable. I refueled the car yesterday and um, the, the, the warning light hadn't come on. Actually, um, I'm not even sure if there is a warning light, but uh, it was still down at a quarter and uh, I filled in 60 litres, so I reckon it's a 70 litre tank. Big tank, petrol. Some people ask why didn't I buy the diesel? I mean, no no particular uh, preference. I, I, I've got nothing against diesels. Uh, I love diesel engines actually. Diesel engines are, are wonderful, but um, I bought this particular unit of this Pajero and not other Pajeros. There are other Pajeros out there which uh, are for sale and some of them are in very, very good condition. Uh, it all depends on price. Pricing, it all depends on condition. I knew this one needed work. Uh, even before I went to haggle the price, I knew this one needed work. But the reason I bought this one is because it already had most of the 4x4 kit that I would eventually have put onto this car anyway. And those things are expensive if you buy them new. Now, back in the 90s when I had my, my Ford Courier, I know, can you hear that? Yeah. So back in the 90s when I had my Ford Courier and I was heavy into 4x4 going off-road almost every weekend and uh, taking part in um, 4x4 events and even driving my Ford Courier to China, yes, I drove from Dataran Merdeka to China in the year 2000. It was the Silverstone Rally of Asia uh, year 2000, the Millennium Run they called it. We drove from uh, Dataran Merdeka all the way into southern, southern China. Uh, to, a, to a, a, a town or a city called Jinhong. I, I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but yeah, it was, it was J-I-N-G-H-O-N-G, Jinhong. But uh, that was one of the most epic drives of my life and I enjoyed it so much and I've always harbored thoughts of, uh, of doing it again. And now that was 21 years ago that I had this, uh, that I had this drive and um, always, always, always wanted to do it again. And I, I think I'm pretty sure I can remember the route even because that's that's how much of an impression it left on me back then there was no smartphone so there was no ways no Google Maps uh, we had to rely on tulips I don't even know if you know what tulips are they're they're more than just a flower tulips are actually road books that you have to read and check uh, landmarks and signboards and signages to where you're supposed to turn next and I think I have those tulips somewhere there are about seven books thick uh, of getting from uh, Dataran Merdeka to China. So yeah, maybe, yeah, someday I shall do, the, do it again uh, in this Mitsubishi Pajero. But you know what, word to the wise, uh, if you're gonna do a, a, a huge overland journey like that, get yourself a diesel engine. Yeah, you, you, you need the frugality of a diesel engine because uh, this car is a bit of a guzzler. And you know what, that's, that's nothing against this car. I mean, nothing bad, it's just the way it is. It, it is what it is, like my buddy Adrian always says, it is what it is. Uh, back when this car was being created, being built, being introduced to the world, uh, fuel efficiency was like, huh? What was that? Yeah, so <laughs> these days we get cars that are very, very frugal. There's an ambulance coming and I've got nowhere to pull over. Hey, it's a 4x4, maybe I'll climb the curb. Let me just get out of his way, yeah? Always get out of the way of ambulances. Okay, he's, he's gone into the fast lane, which is great. Thank you. So, what was I saying? Yeah, get yourself a diesel. Because uh, for one thing, diesels are more uh, construction and uh, very hardy type engines. You can actually leave a diesel engine running all night and it'll just putter along and not overheat and not blow its top. It'll just keep going until it runs out of diesel. Th that's how good diesels are. So yeah, get yourself a diesel if you want to do a, a very uh, long distance, long, long distance, kind of long distance drive, okay? That drive, that journey to China took 22 days, I still remember. It was uh, 10 days getting there, 12 days getting back. Because getting back, it was uh, all on your own and uh, free and easy. I was alone the entire way coming back. But going there, I had somebody with me. But he flew back to uh, Japan after we reached China. He flew back to Japan. So I drove back the whole way by myself. It was, it was just a brilliant, brilliant overland drive. Um, and yeah, hopefully I can 
we can do that again. I'm this, I mean, we as in this car and I and you following me on, on my channel. Yeah, hopefully we can do that again someday. But as you know, uh, MCO 3.0 is going to be in effect soon. Uh, tomorrow actually. So that's why I'm doing this shakedown drive by myself alone today. To just uh, make sure everything's copacetic. Yes, ambulance, I hear you. I'm far, far away. So, and that's why I'm getting it done today. So, anyway, what was I saying? Yeah. This Pajero is running beautifully, running really beautifully. I knew the bill was gonna be about three grand. I had I had three grand in my mind, so I'm very happy it came in below three grand. Everything sorted, all the fluids changed, engine oil, gearbox oil, differential oil, coolant. You, you saw the coolant. The coolant is actually quite cool. Coolant is actually the coolant was actually quite clean, and uh, but we changed it anyway. And the temperature is stable, just below half as it's supposed to be. The uh, fuel gauge is working. It's right at the top because I, I, I filled up I'm hoping it will drop actually that's weird right I'm hoping it will drop just to show me that the fuel gauge is working properly speedometer is fine trip meter is uh, excuse me a second yeah trip meter is working well correct and uh, rev is working so we're just gonna have to wait and see how this car handles what it was meant to handle and what I bought it for if I can find a place where we can just head off the beaten path I will uh, if not, you just I'm just gonna have to make do with a uh, on-road shakedown drive. But uh, so far, it's great. And apart from the army truck sound, which uh, weirdly I kind of like, it makes me feel like I'm driving an army truck. <laughs> the everything else is so good. The, the aircon is so nice and cool. The clock is working, which is great digital clock. But uh, hey, it's working. So you know, as long as it works, I'm happy. And uh, I got the mats done at uh, Procast. Thank you, Hang and, and crew. The, the mats were done yesterday. So I got two new front mats. A one-piece rear footwell mat. I'm trying something new. It's just one piece because this car sits on a ladder frame. It's got a flat floor at the back. It's nice to have just one piece. It, it looks kind of cool. And uh, that's it, really. I don't think I'm going to do much more to the inside. I might get some new aircon vents if I can find them. This, this one's a little bit broken. And uh, that's it. That's it, this car is just running really, really well. I'm very, very happy. Very, very happy with this purchase. And uh, I'm sitting high, I've got I've got uh, shock absorbers in the seats, which is great. And I'm sitting high, and everything looks wonderful. So yeah, stay tuned, more to come. Delighted. And uh, just before I do that, one thing also to remember, I actually drove here just now, you can see my tire tracks, uh, is to actually walk the trail first, like I said earlier, and also check, because you never know, this, this could be, it looks very smooth and very uh, uh, sturdy and very rough, and but, but, it's actually very soft. See? It is actually very, very soft. So, you never know, there could be an underlying uh, layer of mud underneath this, and you drive onto it, and the next thing you know, zoom, you're stuck. So yeah, you can you can hear vehicles because the, the main road is, is right there. So this is just off the main road, uh, not very far in, don't worry. So if anything happens to me, uh, I'm going to be very easy, very easy to be found, not, not, to, not to worry. Of course, this is, a, this is no way. This is really cool though, because uh, let me just show you something. Let me go all National Geographic here. What's happened here is that the, uh, the rock on top is, is hard enough to actually hold to hold this together but then uh, through um, rain and, and uh, washing away it's actually become it's actually become like a little cliff look at that which you can actually just push over quite easily awesome and it's all over the place this uh, I don't know which one is it is it stalactites or stalactites I think it's stalagmites. this is a nice one here check this out this is really really cool it looks like a scene from another planet so yeah this part is very hard but uh, and it has actually protected the the rest of it so the uh, rainwater has actually washed this all away and this is still still up there i wonder how long it took to to do that knowing our rains probably just one or two rains look at this this looks like a cliff like uh if i put little figurines here it looks like they're going to be doing rock climbing but this is all soft very very soft i'll show you, I'll show you how soft see just like that that's how soft it is lovely so now with the gear in free and the front left and right hubs locked i need to go into four wheel drive so first first step up is four wheel drive high okay you don't want to go into four wheel drive low just yet until it gets too steep so i'm gonna put the uh, windows down 
one touch windows working and uh, let's hope this one's working as well yeah working great so I've got the windows down and let's see how far we can go I am having so much fun <laughs> I'm glad I brought my GoPro I'm having so much fun this is awesome you see you see it goes even further I know way I'm gonna make it up that no way I'm gonna make it up that but maybe there's another one over there I uh, don't think I'm gonna make it up here uh, then again, you never know if I go at an angle, maybe, but the problem with angles is that you might tip over, so be careful. So I think, uh, for now, I think this is perfecto. Can't see the road anymore. Look at that. Oh, maybe I can go up there. That will be nice. So yeah, if you want solitude, you want to be alone, you want to experience this, that's amazing though. That that that's probably like a ramp for for dirt bikes to go up. Nice. I think I'm gonna go up there. Let's go up there and see what it's like. Well, this looks familiar. If you remember, I came here with the Vol Volvo. <laughs> no, the Proton X70. Uh, I think I parked it right about there. And uh, somebody, uh, very thankfully, thank you, uh, informed me that this you this was a failed development. It was supposed to be Gunting Valley or something like that. But they. Uh, they, they, they made the garbang, uh, they made the entrance, the other one's behind those trees and uh, this is all that's left, it never really took off. So why am I here? I just decided to come in and say hello, I've not been in here for quite some time and I'm already out of four-wheel drive but uh, coming in you don't even need it really. Uh, just a few areas here and there where it's, uh, there were some puddles but I'm actually in uh, two-wheel drive high right now and uh, just just an off-road little off-road trail nothing too major uh, it's been plied very often a lot of people use this place and uh, it's a very very easy track uh, <laughs> but a very easy track to come in uh, sadly some people are already using it as a dumping ground for stuff as you can see but uh, yep, just an easy trail in and out uh, the problem with these oversized tires is that uh, it does flick up quite a bit of mud. One thing about it, if you are in two-wheel drive and you see something slippery like this, you need to go fast. You need to keep your momentum up, yeah? You must, must keep your momentum up. If you don't keep your momentum up, you're gonna get bogged down. Here we go. So you see, for that, I didn't even need uh, four-wheel drive, but I'm gonna need a towel. Ew. Uh, gross. This car was made for me. Check it out, I've got my own towel rack. <laughs> Pajero. Bye. And now we're back to civilization. Got the aircon going, cooling down. It just It's just amazing. The best of both worlds, really. Uh, <laughs> don't know what else to say, except yeah, very, very happy with this. Very, very happy. Such a good car. And uh, able to go off-road whenever you feel like it. None the worse for wear. Just incredible. In 1.7 kilometers. Yep. Turn left I'll be home soon. Lamport, Not too bad. So anyway, MCO 3.0 tomorrow. Take care, you all. Be safe, be happy. Uh, let's just deal with this. Get over it once and for all. Let's get rid of this thing. The virus has not gone anywhere, yeah? It's still around. So just stay safe and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye. I love this car. So good morning, folks, and here we go. 
the tint part uh, three of the of the three things that I must do the standard three these are the DRLs that used to be on my waja I've changed the ones on the waja and I kept these so these now which look a little bit tougher are on the Pajero and so yeah getting the getting rid of the older tint was very uh, it's proving to be quite difficult as you can see it's kind of eaten in already especially this which used to be black it's now completely clear this is going to be difficult to get rid of but they will take the uh, the old tint off using a special chemical all the gum will come off and the uh, new tint will go on before any of the body work is done but uh, yes three phases of body work and I shall let you in on it later so the car proved itself really well off-road yesterday very very happy with what happened so 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 happy very very good yeah so I can't wait to see what the tint is gonna look like not going too dark because uh, even though it's it's legal I don't want to go too dark for safety purposes yes so that's starting to look very clear already nice so not only will they get rid of the old tint uh, they will actually clean the glass before they apply the new tint as well good thing about an SUV like this lots of space to work so the tint is done and it's looking good yes I like it so why am I back here at Kenzone well remember what I said about breaking something when I went off-road sure enough well we never changed the wheel bearings in front so yeah I shot the wheel bearings yesterday when I went when I did the off-road stuff so whatever it takes just wear and tear new wheel bearings I'm gonna have to go into the front because I was hearing a grog 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 kind of sound and it wasn't the tires it wasn't the mud terrain tires but yeah upon checking definitely it's the wheel bearings so it's good that we identified the problem straight away and we'll get that done as soon as possible nice oh while we're here the charade is fixed it was uh, leaking some gearbox oil the Sentra was making a noise when I made a right hand turn that's been done it was the uh, stabilizer bushes that have been changed the brake wagons brakes were failing and it was actually the servo pump so got in a new servo pump there yes all my old schools here the only car not here right now is the Accord which is at uh, Ake's place getting ready for paint nice I've been looking for these for the longest time. Have you all seen this? Little trees. Green apple is the best. If you want really, really nice, fresh smelling inside your car. Not to say that this car is stinky. It's not. I've bought much stinkier cars in the past. But if you want something uh, very refreshing, get the green apple. Don't get the lavender. Don't get the jasmine. Don't get any sweet smelling stuff in your car. You know why? Because after a while, uh, it's going to make you hungry. So yeah, don't do that. Get the green apple one. The green apple one is lovely. So I'll show it to you again, yeah? Get up so get this uh little trees green apple kind of hard to find these days i'm surprised i got it here at the petronas so yeah small wins small wins anyway i'm uh probably gonna head back now but i just thought i'd share that with you one thing really nice about driving this and i can tell i can see why now once they say once you drive an suv you won't want to drive a passenger car anymore i can see that i can see why because i'm able to see much further in front I can see over the roofs of other cars. I'm not saying this car is really, really tall. It's not, it doesn't have a body lift or anything. Yeah, it's got bigger tires, but uh, it's no taller than uh, like 70. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's just a early model SUV where uh, before SUVs be even became SUVs, they were just called four by fours. 
uh, 4x4 uh, thingies. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I can see now why. And also these big mirrors, I love these big mirrors because then I, I can actually see my tires. I can see my rear tires. So I know if I'm gonna curb it or not. That, 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 that's really awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's it. Just wanted to tell you about the little trees.